guess what? I'm in a weird mood. I think this is gonna be a particularly weird drunk commentary. <laughs> The F word part? Oh, this is drunk commentary for Girl with Basket of Fruit. If that would, did you hear that? That's the Girl with Basket of Fruit part. So the F word thing came from Bob Barango, Bob Mortz. Uh, he said, he said Mother F and Funny in a song once. So I always thought it was Mother F and Funny. And the part where it goes, Girl with Basket of Fruit. Which is the whole song, right? Um, Greg Sonye, the impenetrable, I mean invincible. <laughs> he's not impenetrable at all, he's super approachable. I meant maybe impenetrable by projectiles. But like invincible, like Incredible Hulk or something. Um, we, we, uh, I said something like, I don't know, this needs some kind of chorus, but obviously it's not organized that way. It's, you know, like, grow a basket of fruit or something like that, but not like that. And he said, no, that's exactly what it should be. And I said, where should, where should we do it? And he said, just sing it once, and then we'll just place it in the song when it feels appropriate. So I just picked up the cheapest microphone I had, and I said, grow a basket of fruit, and we recorded it. And then I had a job. <laughs> Excuse me. Those are my nephews going ding. Sweet little guys. Ding. Little cuties. Um, <laughs> I tried to have it be my ringtone on my phone. Them saying ding, but I couldn't figure it out. So anyway, so I had this big notebook of lyrics. Like the most lyrics I ever wrote. And most of them became uh, the piece Deforms the Unborn, which is kind of a prequel to this record that was performed at the Guggenheim under the watchful eye of the artist Jan Vo. Um, anyway, so there was like seven or eight or nine million pages of lyrics called Deforms the Unborn, and I, I, Greg and I started going through them and we just started, we decided what the song would be about, and then we just went through this giant notebook and started picking line picking out lines that we thought could work and that we felt were relevant to the subject at hand <laughs> um, and then we organized the lyrics kind of in chunks and yep not in lines not in verses not in sonnets not in babies bonnets but in chunks <laughs> um and then there you go. There you have it. One of the worst reviewed songs we've ever done. But, you know, the vast majority of music writers are incredibly stupid. Not all of them. There's some good ones. But um, just like, you know, the vast majority of bands are all pretty fucking terrible. The vast majority of people who think that um, it's a good idea to be mean to people professionally um, over all over their hopes and dreams. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Something about hopes and dreams. Oh yeah, one of the worst reviewed records we ever had. Probably, I think the worst reviewed record we had. Maybe it's worse. You would know better than me. Because you, maybe you're the people who are making it bad right now. You are the people who make Shushu suck. You make Shushu suck. I do everything I can to make it amazing, <laughs> but you make it suck. <sighs> Sorry for that. You know, you, you're the only reason for it to exist. So just ignore me. This is a long pause. Oh, I get it. It's a dramatic build. Yes. Very mysterious. Oh, yeah. Fucking fade in, man. With a little electronic. Oh, yep. This, uh, these, these were taken 
a, a lot of the lines from this were inspired by photos by Antoine Diagata. And this, the lyrics for this were all part of Deforms Unborn too. For a second we were going to call the record Deforms Unborn. Which is the name of a demon, a creepy demon. Um, <laughs> the tomato on rubber wheels is from Richard Scarry. Do you know who Richard Scarry is? If, um, if you're around my age or older, then you know who Richard Scarry is. But if you're nowhere around my age, either much older or much younger, then you won't know who he is. But anyway, he's a children's author. Little worm with a little hat little mice driving around in apples with wheels tomatoes with wheels um <laughs> that is the funny part <laughs> um what a weird sound sorry i haven't listened to this song and since it was since whenever this came out 2019 That's the Yamaha YC45D organ, which I sold to Miguel de Pedro, who, uh, Kid 606, last week. I wish I didn't have to sell it, but I'm glad it's going to somebody who I think will do something good with it. Oh boy. Whenever. With the the two tours that we played this song, uh, whenever I would sing this part live, I almost always ran out of breath, and I started uh, kind of like the the I started getting kind of like black hole, black tunnel vision. That's the ticket, tunnel vision, mama, um, baby, tunnel vision, captain. And, and then I, it was kind of like my vision was filling with true black. My vision was filling with smoke, smoke. What a fucking dork. One and two. Uh, <laughs> uh, that one and a two and a three is a Freddie Rupert joke. Um, uh, this song is about my sister having cancer. She's doing better with it than she was at the time that this was recorded. Thank God. Um, but that's what it's about. And I think just letting her know that I loved her and encouraging her to get through this moment of bodily oh, oh shit disruptive painful, expensive, time-consuming horseshit. And do what you do best, sister of mine, which is talk shit and make fun of people. I don't like swallowing noises, but I hope you heard some sw some uh, chugging noises. Um... I was at a dance club with Angela, and we met Ron Athey there, who is later in a video for one of these songs from this record. Uh, and we were dancing with Boogie Towning at this Boogie Town dance club in a small part of Los Angeles. That is a. <laughs> this vocal's pretty cuckoo. Um, and while I was on the dance floor, I was possessed with the need to do the vocals for this song right at that very moment. And I drove home and left Angela at the dance club, but she had another friend who would take her home. And uh, I live under a flight path, and the airplanes fly over a lot. It made me go crazy. I do uh, start taking pills because the airplanes destroyed my brain. A horrible case of psychotic misophonia. Um, now my sister has to write a super weird, depressing 
song about um, me having a psychotic misophonia. Um, my mom always used to sing that to us. <laughs> um, oh, anyway, so I had to go <laughs> into the closet uh, at, at our studio. <laughs> What a fucking shoo-shoo-y thing to do right there. <laughs> uh, um, blah, 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 blah. All right. I was just trying it out to see if I could still do it if I still have my chops. If I still have my jiggly, 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 jiggly chops. I didn't. That was my. That was the height of my um, jiggly, jiggly powers. Was that moment that night where I went to the closet and it was so hot. It gets so hot in my house. Oh my god, it gets hot. And I had to close the closet and then sing one time through. And it's kind of improvised. I mean, there's lyrics, but no real melody and a lot of kind of spatial improvisation. You like that? I made that up. Um, anyway, so I was very worn out afterwards because I was being cooked. Perched upon your head as if dropped from the ceiling by accident. Never not had worry, and now never not blind. As if dropped from the ceiling by accident. That is from a book. But I can't remember what the book is. Um, a kagapo is a, if you don't know, if you're not a complete dork, it, um, it's a kind of ground parrot. <laughs> they're, they're quite big. They don't fly. Uh, and, uh, my friend Alicia Smith, uh, the bird conservationist and super feathered friend, friend of the feathered friends, uh, she, uh, we, we like to talk about them. They're a nice color. No, a skeleton bottle and a baby on a boob. Also, um, in Deforms Unborn. A Margie V, who is, uh, none of us in Deforms Unborn, but all of these lyrics for Ice Cream Truck. This is, uh, from Deforms Unborn. This is a tough vocal. That is a sample. From shoot, I don't remember. We don't use samples a lot, almost never. Oh, the drums are uh, the uh, uh, Yoruba drumming, and uh, the drums in Grow Up Basket of Fruit are Haitian drumming. For the Yoruba drumming in this song, uh, we recorded it, and then we. Slowed it down, so it sounded a little, uh, a little heavier, like the opposite of this weak-ass bass solo. Dingly, dingly, ding. You know what the interesting part of this is? The <laughs> not this fucking stupid-ass bass solo. Uh, this, uh, yeah. You hear the, you hear the, you hear those drums, the aforementioned drums. This is, uh. Um, that's them, but slowed down. The vocals aren't slowed down, but they sound slowed down. I was just really dragging it. That's some weird ass synth thing there. You know, more than usual, there's some <laughs> pretty decent one-liners. <laughs> um, this song is just essentially about the t t shittiness of of uh, sort of existing halfway in one plane of light and one plane and dark and darkness. Uh, you know what that? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
so that's Angela laughing drunk and laughing and uh, her um, little little giggles got got sampled up that's Elliot Reed playing a little bell The uh, the drum arrangement on this is ripped off from uh, the Armand Van Helden mix of Wish Doctor. Just kind of where the breaks are, essentially. Dance music is difficult to arrange for me, so I just had to steal from one of the masters of pacing, the masters of racing. The masters of basting your tofu. Basm. 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 Bull with huge horns. And. And rushing into a crowd of leaves. Elliot just, uh, just <laughs> that's a good line, Angela. Uh, Elliot and Angela just sort of improvised their lines, uh, and they were two two different two different stories. One mommy and one daddy, but they got they got mushed mushed together initially out of con out of any sort of context, and they became a single context. That context being a pumpkin attack. Once. Have I drunk commentary told this story before? I got kicked out of the Cobalt Cafe and so did my friend on Ventura Boulevard. I doubt it's there anymore. But we were being obnoxious. And we were embarrassed that we got kicked out because we'd hang out there a lot. So we knew on Friday nights glue in a bag that's me that's my only appearance and I did it on motherfucking psilocybin mushrooms and all I could come up with was glue in a bag what a rip off what a rip off I'm not gonna talk to you about what that favorite sweater thing is it's too weird and too gross oh I know I was talking about something Pit shifting, man. Oh, yeah. Cobalt Cafe. <laughs> I knew on Friday nights, my friend and I, Melissa Gifford, on Friday nights knew that there was just teenagers working there. And, uh... <laughs> oh, it's Mark Kibi Company. That's me, too. I got I got a couple of little jibby, mushroom silk jibby jabs. Um, and so we went behind the store and we turned the circuit breaker off because we and we knew so the power went out. And we knew the kids wouldn't know what to do. We were teenagers too. We knew <laughs> we knew our peers wouldn't know what to do. How we knew what to do, I don't know. And then we knew the owners. We knew where they lived. And we knew they would leave <laughs> and have to come and deal with our little prank. And then while they were gone, we went to Pierce College and. Oh, they have pumpkin patch, and we filled up my friend Melissa's truck with pumpkins, and then we put them all over the yard. It was maybe a hundred pumpkins into the yard of the people who own the Cobalt Cafe, who kicked us out. I hope I didn't tell the story before. Any, oh, that's the pumpkin attack. You get it? Don't feel bad. Angela didn't want to put the line where she's a Dorky Escupo weird on that she understood why some people don't like me, but to me it seemed like an important line. It seemed like a line upon which you could dine. Upon which there's only one more rhyme. Charismatic attract rabbit. Carpet beetle, hoo hoo grub. 
Rice Weevil platform. There's bug field cricket. There's not no grass grub good reason for this list of tiny creatures. There's a very there are there are a specific list that have something to do with each other. Um, but I don't know what it is. The lyrics from this are not from Deformed Something Born. This is a song about somebody who I really dig. Soft in the head and But you will never know who they are. Because I is a secret keeping bitch. To get. This synthesizer is <laughs> undoubtedly the Dave Smith Prophet 08. Ooh, oh, look at that little chordy chord. Nice one, Jay Stu. Little Chicky Schmicky on the Ivory Diveries. This is, this is a lot of bad rhymes. Sorry. They spent eating and only eating without ease and without reflection. Oh. Apple sorry chunks. I knew what this was about Acorn. once. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm so faded, but... Faded... That I can't remember. The, these are... Um, these jingly janglies are... Some... Uh, bowls that Angela got in Nepal. And we jingly jangle them with... Uh, some old electric vibrators for the old electrical clitoris or electrical butthole or electrical dingus or electrical nipple holes or what about electrical schmickle moles or how about a mound of schmorkle schmores or what about some black wavy lines of quirkle quartz or what about some smooshy smimes of schmorkle schmorps yeah man with you oh boy what a sap what a fucking sap but it's true. He's a true <laughs> sap. Oh boy. I'm gonna have a hard time getting through the rest of this record. I'm starting to feel like the cuckoo. Cuckoo. I, I like these crazy sounds, but I don't know what it is or where it came from. I like Angela's recitation under this. It sounds cool. 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 These are a lot of crazy sounds. That's some weird ass synthesizing. It's hard for me not to sing along. so bad he's so bad she's so bad Keith Richards is so bad that's a, a lightning Hopkins sample that is slowed down and I'm sure we've never cleared now we're fucked 
I'm fucked because I can't get my fucking fuckhole stuffed with fuck logs. The drum machine in this is the HR16B. One of the greatest drum machines of all time. It was the first instrument I ever had. My dad got it for me. What a cool dad. Um, this is not my real voice. It's slowed down, if you didn't know. I, I don't even want to talk about this song at all. Ugh. I fucking hate people. Fuck the United States forever. Ugh, what a fucking shithole. Like the most fucking expensive disaster area on earth. Ugh. I feel like anytime I see an American flag, somebody just privately posting one on their house. Or today I went to the beach and some fucking asshole had surrounded around his beach chair like 15 American flags. Um, no joke. Uh, just what horrible, horrible, horrible thing did you do that you think that putting a bunch of American flags on or around you is going to somehow rectify <laughs> What what awful things you did. Do you know what I mean? Good luck, assholes. This is uh, Haitian drumming led by the master Haitian drummer Daniel Breville, uh, one of the finest musicians currently alive today. It's coming, that part, the master drumming. And that's what it is. There's no other way to describe it. Along with Chess Smith, one of his students. That organ is played, is the, once again, the Yamaha 45D2, R2D2. The Simone Hotel is not a place you want to go. Those sound like cats, but those are frogs. A lot of frog samples on this. Oh man, this is the third time I mentioned samples. This must be our sampliest sampling. Um, it's pretty remarkable to me <laughs> that uh, they are able to play at this tempo 
so steadily. This is some um, remarkable musicianship. Nicely done, nicely done, cats. This is clearly from Deformed the Unborn, and I guess I just keep mentioning that the, the sort of central, central premise of Deformed the Unborn. If you haven't heard me fucking yak about this before, is uh, the, those are different. They're um. You just have you just have to re do the research. Just do the research about who those people are. Um, so the premise being uh, what it what what the internal experience of being possessed satanically or demonically possessed, what what does one see when that's happening? What does it feel like? What what does the person experience either psychically or physically? Um, where they have no control over anything because they are in the hands of evil. Evil. Uh, I don't really believe in devils and demons. I think. But I'm hella scared of them. What, do you, what does that mean? That I'm completely full of shit? Probably. So the lines are conversations with demonic spirits or reactions to um, what they are doing to someone or you. And is it necessarily awful? Probably it's necessarily awful. <laughs> Those are frogs again. Oh, this is lifted from um, a percussion piece composed by yours truly called Extinction Meditation. <laughs> Goes along with the forms that I'm born. There's a sample of that. Also slowed down. <laughs> kind of one trick pony here, I guess. Oh yes. This is this is like a normal normal little song. Oh, Angela singing like such a little sweetie. And she played the uh, piano piano on this. This is a duet with one of my favorite singers of all time. Eugene Robinson of the band Oxbow Buñuel and once many moons ago Salmonio man we're really, we're really waiting on Eugene here boy that guy he's been very patient but he's He's a pretty, he's a level-headed, level-headed individual. There he is. He's creeping in. He's creeping in there. And hopefully he'll take over my whiny bullshit. Come on. No Jamie. Just Eugene. You want to hear a little crazy secret? There he is. He sounds crazy. Um, so I wrote this book called Anything That Moves. It's coming out next year. And Eugene Robinson is going to do the audiobook. I'm pretty excited about it.
What a motherfucker! Oh, what a singer! Holy cats! Very exciting. I'm excited by Eugene Robinson's vocals on Normal Love. What do you want? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> This is a short record. Are you relieved? Were you relieved when you got this record and you're like, oh, thank Christ, this is only 36 minutes long and change. I can live through that. I'm a little disappointed, frankly, that I don't um, get to blab anymore, that my blabbing days are over. You know what normal love is about. I don't need to explain this to you. You know who you are. You're smart. You're sassy. You're classy. You're brassy. You're Sylvia Massey. 